What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be working with Flutter. I'm going to be going over how to use the new Navigator 2.0, which allows you to actually navigate your app in a completely declarative way, as opposed to doing something like navigator.push, which is kind of imperative. We're going to be doing it all declarative. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right on in. And as you can see, I already have a lot of this stuff set up and I just want to go over and show the app, which is just a very basic list of users, right? And the user is just going to be a string of names. So as you can see, whenever I tap on it, nothing's happening. Now, the way that we're going to be doing this is we're going to actually replace our home with a new navigator object. And the way that we're going to actually change the screen is whenever we have a state change, whenever we have a selected user, we're going to trigger the navigator to change to a different screen, which is going to be this user details view down here, as you can see. So let's go ahead and start implementing that. All right, so as you can see here, we replaced our home, which was the user's view with the new navigator. And what we're going to do is we're going to essentially be using the pages in here, which are gonna represent our user's view, that's gonna be a page, and our user details view as pages. So those are gonna be our two pages. And in here, it's just in a list of objects. And luckily for us, Dart allows us to add control flow inside of our arrays or our lists. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna specify what is the very base view, right? What is the bottom page that's going to essentially be shown right when we open up the app? And that's going to be our user's view. And it's as simple as that. Simply wrapping our user's view in a material page is going to allow us to add our user's view in as something that can be navigated from. And then whenever we want to show our user details view, then we're going to essentially need a user to be selected. So let's go ahead and create a state property that is going to allow us to hold on to the selected user. There we go, and it's as simple as that. Now we have our selected user, which is gonna just be of type string for this example. And then if we have a selected user, if it's not equal to null, then what we'll do is we'll simply show this material page on top of this material page, which is our user's view. So we're essentially stacking each of these pages on top of each other based off of the logic specified here. And if we go down to our user's view, we need to actually pass the selected user, which we can find right here, this selected user up to the state object of our app right here. So let's go ahead and create a value change property that we're able to pass the user, which is a string through. All right, there we go. So we have the value change property, which we're gonna be passing in through our constructor. And then whenever we select a user, whenever we tap, we're going to pass that user up over here into our app state. Now we just need to make sure that we're handling it right here when we're creating the user's view. All right, we're, we have our user's view and now we have this did select user argument that we're passing in, which is going to run this logic. And as you can see here, we're getting that user and we're updating our selected user, which is right here um, to the selected user right here. So now whenever we do that, our selected user is not going to be null anymore and our material page is going to be shown. So let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. All right, so we have our app loaded up and whenever I select Kyle, as you can see, it navigates. And the awesome thing is that we can just simply hit the back button as long as we have an app bar, which is really great. Now, there is one thing that we need to take note of is that when we go back, we still technically have a selected user in this property. This still has a value. And you'll actually be able to notice that if I shrink this down and if I were to hot reload, what's going to happen is since there is a selected user right here, 
this logic is still going to be true and we're going to show this material page our users our user details view so let's go ahead and hot reload and as you can see it goes back to this screen so what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're going to make this selected user null whenever we go back all right, as you can see in the onpop page closure, we are actually setting the selected user to null. And then this route.didpop is essentially allowing the navigator to go back. So let's go ahead and reload this and try again. And as you can see, we're going to select a user. And when we go back and then we do a hot reload, we should notice that it stays on the users page because our selected user has been set to null and this logic is no longer true. Now, before I let you go, there's one additional thing that I just wanna show you. Now, there are gonna be times where you're gonna be working with state that is going to be updated based off of the different pages, right? So like if we had a different screen that we were gonna go to, we wouldn't necessarily always want to set selected user to null, right? Like if we went to the selected user screen and then went another screen forward, we don't want the selected user to be set to null when they go back from the third screen. And that would essentially cause this to be null, right? And this to be false, and then it would pop all the way back to the user screen. We wouldn't want that. So one way that we can fix that is to actually add a static property, a value key, where we can do some logic in here because this is going to be ran every time the user hits the back button. So we can do some logic on the route to check what view is actually being displayed, what page is being displayed, and only set this equal to null if it's the user details view. So let's go over to our user details view and let's add in a static constant key. All right, so we have our static constant value key right here, and you can literally put in whatever, it doesn't really matter, just throw in whatever string, you can put poop if, if you want. So it's just a string, but we wanna make sure that every user details view has the same key. If you want that type of logic, you can obviously change that logic too. But anyways, what we wanna do is we want to actually check to make sure that the route or the the page that's being popped has the same key as the one that we want to perform the specific logic for so let's go ahead and unwrap this route and get the material page back all right so as you can see our route has a property called settings, which is actually the material page. So we're just gonna cast it. And, that's, and then we have our page, which we can check the key of that page. And then we can just check if it's equal to the value key. Now, as of right now, we haven't actually set the key for our material page. So we need to also update that. And there we go. So now our material page is being initialized with not only the child, but also the same views value key. And then we're going to make sure that the page key is going to be equal to the user details view value key. And then we'll run that logic. So let's go ahead and run it again and make sure that everything is still working. All right. So we have our view and I select Kyle. Then I go back and then I do a hot reload and we notice that nothing really changes, but if I were to update this to just be like some random string, all right, so if we update it to be a, just a random value key, right? Let's go ahead and restart this. All right, let's select a user. Let's go back and then let's do our hot reload. And as you can see, our logic isn't being called because the value key is not the same. So we're just gonna change that back. So that's all I wanted to show you for this tutorial. I just wanted to go over and show you how to use the new Navigator 2.0. It makes things completely declarative, much better suited for Flutter. So that's gonna be it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any suggestions on topics that you want covered, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and I'll definitely check those out. If you want to see more videos like this, then make sure that you subscribe. It really warms my heart whenever you do. <laughs> All right, so that's gonna be it for today. Thanks for your time. Go out there and keep coding passionately.